Welcome back. After spending 21 days in the custody of the EFCC, temporary reprieve came the way of suspended judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia, and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Obla, as Justice Akim Oshodi of the Lagos High Court sitting in Nikeja, granting their bail on self-recognizance. In this next report, we look at some of the twists in the case and the charges made against the two defendants by the anti-graft agency. The duo were arraigned before the court on a 30 counts charge. Four of the charges border on a 5 million naira bribe allegedly given to the judge by the senior advocate at a time she was presiding over one of his cases. In her statement to the EFCC, Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia allegedly claimed that the money was a deposit for a property she sold to the senior advocate. In his statement, the SAN allegedly claimed that the money was a payment for building materials. Though the anti-graft agency believes that there are inconsistencies in both statements, the defendants pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to them. The remaining 26 counts charged in this case bother on the huge amounts that passed through the accounts of the judge and her alleged inability to explain the source of the monies, which is far above her lawful income as a public servant. In documents put before the court, the EFCC claims that over $700,000 passed through Justice Ajimogobia's domiciliary accounts between 2012 and 2015. She allegedly used some of the money to buy a house in London. These offenses are said to be contrary to Section 82A of the Criminal Laws of Lagos State 2011. To this set of charges, the judge also pleaded not guilty. The anti-graft agency has, however, frozen their accounts to prevent her from moving the rest of the money. The EFCC also objected to the application for bail made by the defense team and instead submitted that the defendants, even while in custody, had tried to interfere with investigation and witnesses. Presiding Justice Akim Oshodi, however, agreed with the defense team, led by Mr. Wale Akoni S.A.N. for the judge and Mr. Ifedayo Adidipe and Ferdinand Obi S.A.N. for the second defendant, that the EFCC had placed no evidence before the court to back up these claims. Justice Oshodi was also convinced that the duo were not a flight risk. The court then admitted the two defendants to bail on self-recognizance. The defendants are also to deposit their travel passports and 20 million naira with the chief registrar of the Lagos High Court within seven days, otherwise the bill will be revoked. We are confident that they will also come to court uh, and in the unlikely event that they want to take any steps to uh, uh, prejudice us, we know what to do as the prosecuting agency in the case. After the ruling on bail, the EFCC immediately called to the witness box one Ademola Oshodi a staff of Diamond Bank PLC. In his testimony, he recounted how he had been invited to Justice Ajumogobia's home and chambers several times to pick up huge sums of monies which he claimed he helped pay into our account. The witness, who said he was an account officer to the judge, also testified that when the cash became too large, he introduced the judge to a bureau the change operator, one Abbas Said who he claimed converted the Naira to dollars to make it easy for the banker to move the cash around. This damaging testimony was, however, cut short when the defense team objected to the tendering of the statements of account of the judge. They pointed out that their clients had been in custody and had no time to brief the team of lawyers on the testimony of the witness and how to properly respond to it. The defense team then pleaded with the court for more time to confer with their clients, prepare their defense, and even determine if they needed to object to the tendering of the statements of accounts. It would be interesting, though, to hear their defense to the testimony of the accounts officer. A day after the arraignment, the Federal High Court, sitting in Lagos, struck out a 15 million naira fundamental rights enforcement application filed by Justice Ajimogobia. Presiding Justice Muslim Hassan held that the application lacked merit as the EFCC had properly remanded her on the orders of a magistrate court. Justice Hassan, however, questioned the rationale behind the revocation of the administrative bail granted to Justice Ajumogobia by the EFCC on October 22, since there was nothing to suggest that she is a flight risk. He urged the anti graft agency to be more professional in performing its duties in the future. 
On the 25th of November, Justice Mohamed Idris of the Federal High Court in Lagos had also struck out a similar application made by the SAN, Mr. Godwin Obla. One interesting twist in this case, however, is that the SAN Godwin Obla once prosecuted for the EFCC and the case against Raymond Omashaye, a former Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Imasa, Mr. Obla actually secured a conviction for the commission. In what the EFCC described as a landmark judgment, Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia on the 20th of May 2016 convicted the former DG on 24 out of a 27 count charge bordering on an alleged 1.5 billion naira contract variation, bid rigging, and awarding of contracts above his approval limit, an offense which the Commission says violates the provisions of the Public Procurement Act. Mr. Omashaye was first arraigned in 2011 before Justice Binta Mutala and Yaku, but following the transfer of the judge from Lagos, his case was reassigned to Justice Ajumogobia, before whom he was rearranged in January 2013. Justice Ajumogobia sentenced him to five years' imprisonment, and Mr. Omashaye has since approached the appeal court for a review of that judgment. It's this very case that the EFCC cites in the charges against Mr. Obla. In another case involving the former Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Adeyemi Kufuriji, Mr. Godwin Obla was also the prosecuting counsel for the EFCC. Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Federal High Court Lagos in that case upheld a no-case submission made by the Speaker and held that the EFCC did not succeed in linking him with the charges. Dissatisfied with his judgment, Mr. Obla filed an appeal on behalf of the EFCC and only recently the Court of Appeal agreed with him that a prima facie case had been made against the former Speaker and he would need to open his defence. For Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia, the National Judicial Council under the chairmanship of former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, at a meeting held on the 24th and 25th of February 2016, had cause to warn her after receiving a petition alleging misconduct and injustice on her part. The petition was written by one Victoria Ayeni and involved a pre-election matter into the Ogun State House of Assembly. The NJC also placed Justice Ajumogobia on its watch list for the next four years after deciding that she would not be considered for any elevation to the Court of Appeal or any ad hoc judicial appointment till her retirement from the bench. Despite all of this, there is a presumption of innocence for both defendants in the present charge and they have indicated their readiness to clear their names. On the 9th of January 2017, Proceedings will continue at the Lagos High Court before Justice Akim Oshodi. He alone has the daunting task of evaluating the evidence and determining where the scale of justice will tilt.